Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show. Sam Hill smashing some trail bike turns. Oh, spherical helmet technology from Bell. Gamux have some 3D goodness. Oh, they do, yeah. And there's uh, one hyperbike. And a steel beauty. <whistles> okay, first up in news, although it's not the latest bike, we have seen it already, the latest video involves Sam Hill riding that new nukeproof reactor. Oh man, he is hauling on this thing. Uh, there's a few cool clips of him on the screen now. I'll tell you what. I'm in. Yeah, like, I think the uh, the way they're pitching a bike is it's very different to the Mega. It's designed as the trail bike. Um, I think Sam referred to it as, um, probably shouldn't say it on here, <laughs> um, but it sounded quite good uh, nonetheless. But it's a 140mm travel bike uh, available in carbon and alloy versions and in both wheel sizes. Uh, we're actually giving one away over on GMBN at the moment. I'm just going to throw you to a little clip and you can find out a bit more. It's got the alloy front end on it, alloy chainstay, and the carbon fiber seat stay. And we're giving away one of these bikes in your preferred size. So stay tuned to find out how. Now there's four sizes from small through to extra large. The reach on those is 45 up to 515. Head angle is 66 degrees, or you can take it back to 65 and a half by changing that flip chip right there, which also lowers the bottom bracket six millimeters. That's by putting it in the rail mode, so it really does accentuate what the bike wants to do. Awesome trail bike, and if you want to win one, you're going to have to click the link in the description underneath what I'm saying right here, or look on our Facebook and Instagram channels to find out more. Good luck. Next up in the news, we have a further refinement of the Bell Super which is kind Damn of nice, I think. Yeah, it was one of the first helmets, I think, that really came in with that removable chin bar. That's right, yeah. I mean, there were, there were obviously other attempts, and uh, not least the Met, but it was kind of a, a real, I feel, a catalyst for a lot of change. I think that initial helmet was fantastic. It was a really good idea, although it just didn't fit everyone's head. No, that's you had good. to have a head of a certain depth, I think. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise your chin would be poking out the bottom like mine would be. <laughs> but the concept was great. Yeah, and they said, it's basically, it's a lot more refined. Exactly. This actually looks like a proper unified design that can be a two-part helmet. And it looks really, really cool. It look, works well with goggles as well. Yeah. What's interesting, it actually uses the spherical system for MIPS. Mm. So that's basically two helmets rotating inside, well, one helmet in rotating inside the other. Yeah. And um, I mean, it looks really, really good. I'd be really curious to see how, uh, I've never ridden the helmet with the two. I don't want to fall off and hit my head, but I'd like to see how it works. I've not tried on the Bell, but I've tried on the Giro version. In fact, the Road helmet, the first one that came out with the spherical MIPS, and you don't notice it too much, no more so than any other MIPS system, although it does feel like, because of the fact it's a whole helmet sliding around, like a ball socket type thing, it does feel, you don't really want your head to grip on the ground at any point, yes, do you? but yeah. it does feel like it would definitely do its job as it's supposed to. Uh, I think it looks wicked. But yeah, 26 vents and 22% lighter than its previous version. 22% lighter. So it sounds like win, win, win. Nice. Um, something actually that I saw you looking at the other day, so I'm gonna rob this story, was Gamux. Uh, are actually doing some 3D printed stuff like a Garmin top cap mounts and angled mounts for top of twin crown fork designs. Yeah. Really neat stuff actually. Really stuff. I think it's really cool. And I wonder if we're ever gonna to get to a stage with downhill racing where data acquisition in terms of the rider, not just the suspension telemetry, will really kind of come into its own. You see sometimes Danny Hart running a Garmin. I wonder if you'll see more people with some, if more technology like this comes in. I think, yeah, I guess there will be a bigger profile of the riders. I mean, I know he runs power meters as well. Because I've never seen a Garmin, a Garmin mount for a downhill bike before. No, no for you sure. You can put them on, but this is yeah. the first one that's like, this is for downhill crowds. Yeah. Loads of interesting stuff on their site, not least, they have a tab called Custom Products, and you can basically hire out the company. Yeah, I, so I, I, saw, I was wondering what that was. <laughs> so it's almost like having your own design team. Yeah, and you can that just- That sounds amazing, isn't it? I mean, it just sounds fantastic. Yeah. I don't know if it's um, the advent of 3D printing is helping this, or- I think we should hire them. Should we yeah. get them to design something? <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, I've always wanted a nice set of clogs, some 3D printed clogs. clogs. Is that what you had in mind? Well, <laughs> like the ones that you're wearing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sliders, baby. But. Um, it looks really, really cool. Another thing I like is they um, do a whole, you know, range of preload adjusters for um, suspension forks, a bit lighter. Okay. Yeah. Basically, it's so your your whole spring doesn't rattle and move. Yeah. But I just thought that's quite quite a trick. It's a nice little hidden, yeah. but nice. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the best stuff is hidden. Um, I also notice they've got some top caps as well. Uh, sorry, said top caps. Um, the stem spaces. Yes. But you see how intricate the design was. Yeah. I was like, wow. You know, the tech inside me says, oh, it shouldn't work. You know, you're, going to, you're going to crush it, but your stem doesn't move when it's on, it's just there to preload the bearing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they look great. Nice stuff. 
Now, more customization, this perhaps to the extreme, but Morph Cycles, which is quite a small UK startup Tiny brand. brand, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And basically, the guy behind it just said, I want to build the sort of bikes I'd want to ride. And that was enough, and off he went. So a steel full suspension bike with a um, single pivot. Yeah, nice and simple. Yeah, nice and simple. I mean, sometimes with bikes, you get with either regressive or progressive suspension curves. And when you look at the graphs, sometimes it's to um, one decimal point, so it varies a bit. Sometimes it's to two decimal points. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, people sometimes don't realize the nuances in that. With a um, single pivot, the, it's very linear. Now he said this is what he favours because then you can adjust it either running a large volume air shock with no spaces. Of course, yeah, or a smaller can on there. Smaller can, yeah, yeah. And he says it leaves lots of adjustability. He basically, I don't know, he just sounds like quite an interesting chap. He says he's not going to do model years because he wants to make it less of a fashion thing, more of a you just buy product the bike. thing. You buy the bike, yep. similar to Geometron do. Yep. You buy the bike, you know, it can change between 29, 650, I know, it just looks really cool. That's an interesting take, actually. It's almost uh, an arms race to get next year's bike out for many manufacturers, isn't yeah. it? Um, could almost be, dare I say, it could almost be wasteful. Yeah. I guess because it's churning out a rate of bikes so far. So yeah, it's quite refreshing to see someone approaching it like this. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's nice. really cool. Now, one bike that does have a lot, a lot, a lot of adjustability is the Rocky Mountain Instinct. In fact, it has nine different positions. Do you know, they, they're doing a lot at the moment, Rocky. They are doing a lot. I've always liked them, but they're kind of gone around the clock a bit and they're all back on again, I think. <laughs> yeah, they are. And they're releasing their 99 range Instinct, which is basically super limited edition. Yep. To only 20 being made. Only 20? Well, I thought it was more than that, actually. No, only 20. Oh, so they're going to be gone by the time you look at this show, yeah. though, I reckon. And they are dream spec. Yeah. Absolutely everything. But that's got nine positions. Where would you even begin? You... That can be quite confusing, I, I think. I think so, yeah. Um, I kind of feel like we need to a video on how to get your geometry set up on your bike <laughs> if your bike has adjustable geometry. Yeah, maybe. So it's a bit of a minefield. Maybe when we get our reactors, we can... Yeah. Uh, Let's figure out what works best for us. Yeah, definitely, Perfect. it's a good idea. All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. You know the drill, this is basically your garden shed, it's your workshop, it's your garage, it's the front room. Uh, wherever you keep your bike, wherever you work on it, send us your pictures, we love them. Uh, link to it is right underneath there. You need to copy and paste that mind, uh, send them in. So first up this week is from, oh, look at the state of this place, there's loads going on there. Ooh. So this is from Nick in, San Diego, wow. Uh, I spend about 75% of my life here when I'm at home. As you can see, it's loaded. Pretty much all the tools I need uh, to do all the basic stuff on my bikes and help out the neighborhood kids, wicked. He's got one of those bikes, I can't remember what the brand is, but they've got that really long shock yoke oh, in the bottom left. Yes, um, I've totally oh, forgotten them as well. Super, super interesting bikes. Hopefully we'll get I wonder little, how you get on. We'll get a little cue to that in a minute and I'll pretend we remember what it is. <laughs> can we just like insert here? Oh, it's the... Eminent Onset 140. I tell you what, it does look rad. Loads of stuff. And I love the fact that you said that uh, you help out the neighbourhood kids with the bikes. That's really cool. Yeah, big time. Saving everyone a bit of cash and hopefully teaching them a bit as well. Uh, it looks like there's a Niner hanging up from the ceiling there as well. Uh, gravel bike by the looks of it. And I was going to say it looked like a trophy cabinet at the back there with the light on it. But that's just his tool board. And it looks like he's got GMBN Tech on his uh, oh, yeah. on the computer there as well. Very nice. Nice carpeted floor. Always good to uh, absorb all your grease and stuff. And uh, nice for catching bearings and stuff. I found that my workshop floor is not ideal for that. They always go straight underneath things. So yeah. that's brilliant. <laughs> Slap board is the worst. Yeah. Oh. Gone. <laughs> yeah, gone forever. Okay, next up is uh, Blair in, uh, well, it just says at home. Uh, this looks like our workshop upstairs, actually. Yeah, big, many park tools. What's the drill? Because you've got a park tool blue drill. I've never even, whatever brand that is, I've never seen it before. <laughs> Park tool, everything. Love it. Looking great. Calvin would be very friendly with you, I'm sure. Uh, built my bike cave in my condo, but turning the small pantry into my bike and sport storage is small, but when I have my stand set up, I've got enough room to do everything. Yeah, it looks like it. Better than the pantry, isn't it? Yeah, and those Rallons are nice as well, eh? Yeah, really nice bikes. Yeah, I got to ride one for a day or so when we did an XTR video. I was surprised how light it was, actually, for what it is. They are nice, nice bikes. They also do that cool thing where Custom linkage. Oh, yeah. So they've actually changed the, just the linkage to give revised um, kinematics. Yeah. That's a super nice thing. I did custom paint as well. Yeah, on, paint. on everything. Yeah. See, you know we always give um, Blake a bit of grief. Yeah. For his obsession with green. Yeah. I've, I've, I was riding the other day. 
My nuke proof is purple. I love purple. Oh, you got purple everything? Purple pedals, which is potentially the bridge too far. Nah. I had to take a perfect um, strap, per purple strap off, then I've got a purple jacket. I am Professor Blum. <sighs> as long as it wasn't a purple Honestly. strap off. Straight on to uh, the next one, which is not worth talking about. Uh, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> now for Rewind, which is where we cast our eyes back to yesteryear with your submissions. Mm. And this week, we've got something pretty special. Check a look at that. Set me up. Yeah. Whoa, Klein it Mantra. Is. Mid Super 90s cool. bad boy. Yeah, well, actually, we were looking at the Klein Mantra in the, uh, the freak show for Halloween mm -hmm. the other day. Uh, definitely freaky bikes, but um, kind of desirable as well in a weird way. That one looks absolutely yeah. mint as well. It is, isn't it? It's in good condition. It looks like uh, I'm trying to think what. I'm trying to work out. Is that an e-bike battery or a speaker? I, guess oh, I think that's a speaker. speaker. Yeah, yeah. Good, good mounting position for it. Uh, the classic unified design. Got the uh, Mac 5 SX fork on the front there. I had the earlier edition though, this was quite a nice fork actually, by all accounts. Uh, bonded the arch to the lower legs. It's one of the first forks that did that instead of making that single piece. Oh wow. Quite why Manitou did that, I'm not sure, but it seemed to work quite well at yeah. the time. Um, Fox Alp shock on the back of there as well. Uh, nice to see it still being used. Obviously it looks like for the daily run or something. Got lots of lights and packs on there for the urban jungle. Oh, and same bike again as this. Whoa, what are those pedals? I don't even recognize those, they're crazy. Pretty uh, meaty, eh? So axles are about one cages. <laughs> Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's a weird modular system. Because that would be, am I right in saying, a unified rear end? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, because this is something you've spoken a lot about, how it yeah. would be great for sitting down. This particular one, amazing for sitting down. Yeah, so the, the whole idea was you basically keep the bottom bracket on the back of the bike. Mm -hmm. So your chain length never changes. So whatever you do with pedaling, you're sweet. You're propelling yourself. So on by all accounts, unified design was actually a bit of genius when it first came out. And then it became two main iterations, a low pivot, like the Trek, or a high pivot like this Klein. The low pivot, when you stood up, the suspension still worked a bit because you could load it, yes. but it firmed quite a lot compared to sitting down. Whereas this one would have felt almost rigid stood up, which some people would have loved at the time. And then you sit down and you get all of that comfort and traction. So a really bipolar bike, really. Um, I was always a fan of the lower pivot because I like my suspension working all the time, but a lot of people love these and there's various other manufacturers that made High Pivot Unified Bike, Schwinn made them, uh, Ibis made them. In fact, Ibis made a, a, a titanium bike called the Bowtie. It didn't have any pivots as well. And it was Unified Design, just relied on the whole frame bending. Yeah, it's funny that how we look at a leaf spring on a car and go, that's completely reasonable. Yeah. As soon as you say a bike frame's going to oh, no, like, oh, I can't yeah. do that. Although, although in a completely unreasonable way, I saw a bike recently that had a cable as a down tube and it had a bit of leaf spring as a top tube. <laughs> <laughs> and this terrifies me now that, you know, you get the bike moves like this and like this and like that. And Just any which way. Now it is time for Top Mods, which is where you display all your hard work on your bikes. If you've been working on your bike at home, made some adjustments, then hit the link below and uh, send us the pictures because it's always cool to see. Yeah. First up, we got Jacob from uh, Casino Australia. Uh, it's a 2015 Giant Glory 1. Hey Dolly and Henry, this is my 2015 Giant Glory. Uh, I bought it used for $1,100. Uh, bargain. But, but it had some problems. Um, yeah, I guess that is quite a good price, isn't it? 600 yeah. quid or something like that. Is that what it is? Works I out. think so, yeah. Wow, that is insane. Um, it had some problems, like the Manitou Dorado suffered from a lot of stiction in the air spring. So I've got a full rebuild kit and oils which fixed the problem. Uh, and because I only ride downhill, I took some of the biggest gears on the cassette and shortened the chain. Made the bike a bit quieter, nice. Uh, it came with a grey 400 pound coil spring, um, but it needed more red. So I bought a red RockShox spring, it looks mint. Uh, then we've got Maxxis, as a guy, by far the best tyre. Uh, and I put on some Maxxis grips that I wanted to race and a Nuke proof titanium downhill saddle. Can't forget the carbon spacers. I uh, hope you love it. Perfect. I mean, it actually looks like a decent build, eh? Glory is a really good bike. They are a good bike. At the time, I think that was probably one of the most popular privateer downhill bikes on earth mm. for the money like even at retail price they were really good for the money yeah. and because they were giant and really good on warranty and all the other stuff that goes with them yeah giant are a bit like kind of almost like toyota yeah you could always completely safe bet and, yeah, yeah totally. definitely yeah if in doubt i've never actually ridden any of the dorados i'd love to have a dorado is a really good fork when it's clean and working but like that's essentially a dorado uh, a little bit of flex in them but i think the riders that became fan of dorados quite like that mm. Interestingly enough, you know, you're living in Aussie. 
the main pitfall a lot of people have with these Manitou archless forks. Yeah. No mudguard. Yeah. No rain, no, problem no down problems. There. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But no, it looks super cool. I've got to say, I love the look of an inverted fork. Yeah. They just, they look way better, I think, than the incorrect way up. Technically, the correct way up, because that's how motorbikes do them, yeah. but um, yeah, I just love the way they look. Yeah. Nice, so, all right, so on to um, a dream bike from uh, Matthew in Landegler, or Klandegler. Uh, it's his new proof. Very Mega nice. 290 factory, I think so. He's uh, probably wrong. James is going yeah. to lynch me and throw rocks at me later for that one. Um, apologise if I said it wrong. Bought this about 18 months ago and have been addicted to upgrading it ever since. Yes, you've got a gear acquisition syndrome. Um, before I picked it up, I asked them to fit the Bowtech ride wide carbon bars, stem, and penthouse flat pedals straight from a new bike because you've already customised it. Um, replaced the drivetrain with an XT 12 speed. Uh, but uh, using a GX Eagle set. Soon to change over to XT after Hope announced a license to start making microspine free hubs. Very nice, yeah. Uh, that microspine system is amazing. I'd, I'd go for that as well, to be honest. I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, Jack the fork up from 160 to 170 to cope with the harsh terrain of BC after a trip. Yeah, that's like, there's a lot going on. 170, 29er. I, I really appreciate the color coordination on it. Mm. Like, it looks really good. It looks very tidy. Um, also increasing the amount of volume spaces in the rear shock to increase the progressive feel of the rear end. Absolutely love it. Um, intrigued what the 2020 Mega 290 has to offer with the geometry changes and increase in rear wheel travel. Um, I don't think you have to worry, I think your bike's excellent, as it is, to be honest. Um, obviously the new bike has a longer stroke shock, longer travel, um, and a bigger shock as well as a longer stroke shock. So. Technically, the shocks can not be working quite as hard, and it's going to offer you a little bit more small bump sensitivity. But really, with that X2 on it, I mean, I've got the same back end as that. It works amazing when it's set up right. Yeah. Yeah, sound bike. Super burly bike. Lovely job. Great to see. Absolutely love that. Uh, keep them coming, guys. Wicked selection. Okay, tech of the week this week, just something that landed on our desks is actually a belt with a multi-tool on it by iFix. Um, now this actually came to my attention from when Hans Ray visited us last year. He actually was wearing one of these belts. And I was like, oh, that is such a cool idea. It was made, I think, by someone he knows out in LA. And look at this, there's a multi-tool that comes on your belt buckle. And it does actually seem like a pretty, I had a quick peek at it earlier on. Yeah. It's got everything on there, right? Pretty much everything you would need. Granted, they're, they're tiny Allen keys and that's get you home stuff, but to have something as part of you wear, I think that's a really cool idea. And even stashing on there a little master link. Yeah, I like having Allen keys in places that aren't my pockets. Yeah. I think when working in a shop, a belt like that would be super useful. Super, you know, yeah. you always have your Allen keys. Thank Although it might look a bit weird if a customer says, can you change my saddle height? You're like, give me a minute. Yeah, hold on a second. <laughs> <Just> gonna have <laughs> a <picture. laughs> I've also just noticed, I didn't see before, there's actually a bottle opener on the back of there. Oh, perfect. Which is nice. Um, there's also, I think you can get, if you don't like the idea of a belt, you can get these that fit on straps. I just, I just can't So you can put it on a strap of your rucksack or... I just can't stop thinking like, oh, I'm just... Would you like a beer? And you're like, yeah, and like, that's not what I meant, <laughs> you know? So I'm getting carried away. I'm thirsty. That's too far, isn't it? <laughs> uh, kind of no coming back from that. Uh, well, there you go. Um, it's just quite cool. It's called iFix. So um, check them out. They make really cool belt buckles and little mini multi tools. And you can pick the different multi tools. They're all compatible with the different buckles. Nice system. Yeah, I think. super great. Oh, well, there we go. There's the end of this week's GMBN Tech Show. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed the content. Leave us some comments underneath. What are you going to throw us to this week, Henry? I'm going to throw to... I mean, I got a bit carried away with this one. Mm. We said we are going to make a wheel trimming video. Oh, I it had to have information, though. <laughs> it had a lot of information. Um, a 15-minute long, small lecture on trimming wheels. Hey, you asked for it. Yeah. Um, that video has got it all in there. I think it's a really good video, by the yeah. way. I really like it. And going on from there, watch it. Tell us what you think. And we'd like to go further, but I want to do it in proper procedural steps. Yeah, sure. We looked at the overall view. We'll next measure some spokes, and then eventually we will go Each to building step some wheels. To building a wheel. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. Yeah, like Henry said, watch the video, give it a like, and leave in some comments so we can serve you for the next video. Yeah, perfect. Um, I'm going to throw you to how to pick the ideal shoe and pedal combination right down there. Uh, as always, give us a thumbs up. Two, one, five. Hapax Legomenon. <laughs> <laughs>